So I'm gonna put, this is the start of the video, it's actually the next day for me now, but you're gonna to wanna to use these vice grips or channel locks, a ratchet, a 13 millimeter. You'll need a 14 millimeter, this one's a ratcheting wrench, uh, another 13 millimeter and a ratcheting 13 millimeter. I mean, you don't technically need this one, you just need this, but makes it easier. All right, let's get on this one. Welcome to Michael Lingens and welcome back to my Jeep. So in this video, I actually got my tires finally rotated. I got about 6,500 miles on them. So these are the ones that were in the back. So see, these are like flat here. I'm just gonna show you this. See how these are all flat? So these are the ones that were in the back. So let's go around to the ones that were in the front that are now in the back. You can see there's a bit of a raise. I assume that's from the wheels turning. So it just kind of stretches the rubber a bit because when they tested it, it was actually both the same. Uh, 13 on the tread gauge i don't know how those things work i don't know what those mean but anyways yeah so that's what it means if you guys do know what the tire tread gauges mean you, know, you can let me know is 13 good like i don't know what the ko2s are when they're brand new i, I think it's like 14 or 15 but that's so that should be pretty good uh, these tires are really dirty they need to be cleaned off and i actually ordered a new spare tire and wheel so what this video is actually about is these things whoops Got some new shock absorbers for the front and the back. Did not mean to drop this one. I believe this is the back. Well, hopefully these are, well, the pictures are all the same. Uh, I thought the front were different. These look like they're all the back. I'll have to double check, but they're Monroe's. Let's get in here so you can see if it, I don't know if you can see the GoPro is not the best up close, but they're Monroe's. So I'm gonna be installing these today. So here we go. Let's take a look at it. It's nitrogen gas charge. And I don't know what these really mean. Doesn't really matter to me as long as it works right. So they're nitrogen charged, so they technically last longer. They're a little stiffer, I believe. They work better, I guess. Uh, I'm going to get a lift kit after the winter. I'm gonna get these for now because the front end is a little, a little loose, so. I'm just gonna do the back. And I guess I didn't realize this, but my rear end actually came with heavy duty springs in the back. That's why it looks a little lower in the front. But all right, let's get started. So to start, we're gonna go down here and it's a 15 millimeter socket you're gonna need. It's right here. Now, because this one's a little out of the way, can't really get to the hole that's there. Let's actually go around to the other side of the Jeep and right here this hole you can actually get to the other one we're gonna have to you know squeeze in there but this you're just gonna unloosen it so when we turn it if you go down here it's a little hard to see i know it's really dark but the shock is actually spinning so it's gonna need to be held in place so what i did over here is i just clamped it down so when i turn it it doesn't keep spinning as it was doing so now the clamps there make sure it doesn't spin so we can get the bolts off and then let's go down over here there's two bolts uh right on top i got some lube on there just make sure those get wet so they come off easier again i just use diamond lube you could use whatever you want but i recommend diamond lube once you finally got it loose just take it out set it down there and then there's the bolt that's coming off. Should be loose, let's see. Whoop, drop that off. And it's hard to see, I'm trying to, there we go, so that's off. The size socket I'm using is a 15 for the top. And then here's my back seat, still haven't cleaned it out yet, that'll be another video. But yep, if you saw yesterday's videos, you saw that I got a new seat. So there's that. Let's go back around here. And let's get this. I believe it's a half inch for the bottom. This GoPro doesn't focus great, but that's all right. So what you're gonna need to do is get two 13 millimeters and there's one on the bottom and one on the top. You're gonna have to hold one and then twist the other or else it's just gonna spin around in circles and not actually come off. So just use two, so kind of like that. And then on the bottom, you're gonna get this one on the bottom there. You're gonna hold one and twist with the other to loosen it off. And again, there's two, one on the other side as well. So I decided the best course of action, just take off the wheel. 
so as you can see in here got another bolt there one on the other side we got that one out already and that's about it once we get that out that pin in there should slide out so once you get those two bolts out let's go over here uh, a little hard to see what we're gonna do pull it down i got the flashlight in our mouth there we go angle it and there we go okay so that was a really shitty uh, voice over there but i had the flashlight in my mouth here we go we got the old one out push down on it and it slowly comes back out so as you can see there i did not winterize that apparently so i'm going to clean that off and spray it down before i get this next one in okay so it's not super dark out yet but i got this spotlight here work light whatever you want to call it so let's get this thing installed all right so what i'm going to do i guess is this i'm going to set it here you want to get this like that like that okay guys it's a few hours later now got the right tools made it to harbor freight just before they closed got this ratcheting wrench these things really come in handy listen to that oh that's a sexy sound so now we're just gonna put it on here and get this top bolt tightened down all right before we fully tighten it down we want to get the last two bolts in the bottom so we're gonna take our old bolts because it did not come with new ones. We're gonna put some more diamond lube on the bolts because they are rusted. So I wanna make sure they go in there smooth and it'll help prevent rusting too, since they are old. Probably should paint them too, but whatever, that's fine. So it's hard to see, I know, but let's get this top one off. We'll just pop it through here like that. And then we'll Put these two together and get them on. Welcome to the next day, guys. I am way more refreshed now. I was getting so tired yesterday. So anyways, I got the right tools now. I went to Harbor Freight in the morning and let's get around here. I got this baby right here. Got the right tools now. Before I was using basically just two wrenches, which was a bitch to do. So now I've actually got, well, like these I bought last night, the ratcheting, so uh, ratcheting wrenches. But uh, now we got, some actual sockets we can use makes it a hundred times easier so i got these in now the bolts are now in so basically you just do this get this one on top and then get a normal wrench on the bottom to hold it and then you just use the ratchet and tighten it down so that's good this is actually done i got this tightened down too with the ratcheting wrench just you know twisted there there you go you're good to go uh, i gotta get this wheel back on i gotta go to work in a few hours so let's go around to the other side once i get this wheel back on and just to show the old one again because i did it in the dark just push it down and you can see how slow it moves so there yeah it's let's get the wheel on And again, to make sure they go on easy, put a drop of diamond lube on the threads, and it helps, you know, they come off the next time you need to take them off, too. So for this side, I actually got the wheel up still, so I'm going to have somebody hold the brakes for me. If you want to do it easier, just set it down before you get the jack stains on it. And once you get all the nuts off, let's take the wheel off. And there's that. Okay. All right, so with the channel locks, we're just going to put this in there, lock it on there. And with our 14 millimeter, this is the correct way. Let's get that. Uh, hold on a second. There's a secondary nut on here, maybe like a locking nut. So we got this one I'll put up top. Uh, I do have the one from the other side. 
So I'm going to install that uh, after this one. Uh, is this not a 14 millimeter? The other side was. Don't you love when they change the bolt size on you? All right, so this is a 14. I'm gonna get a 15 and see. Now I got a 15 millimeter. Let's see if this one fits. It does. There. Oh man, that is loose. All right, it looks like it's loose enough where I can get it by hand. Oh, well, it was. Uh, okay, we'll go by ratchet now. Now I can get it off by hand. There we go. Okay, so now that's good. Now we just gotta get the ones at the bottom. These can come off. We got our 13 millimeter ratcheting socket, our wrench, and our normal 13 millimeter wrench. I'm just gonna use one to hold it, and the other like that. Oop. It's hard to get in here with the camera, so I'm gonna have to take the camera out so I can actually get to it. But that's basically what you need to do, and then just take it off. All right, so we are ready to take this one off. Yesterday, it took me about three hours to get the one off. Well, now it's taking maybe 10 minutes or so. Push down. And again, you can see how slow this one moves out. It's bad. I'll grab the new one now to show you what that's like. All right, so here we go with the new one. Let's take it out there. And we'll see, let's compress it. Oh man, oh. see how quick that went out? This is good. All right, so let's put it on. First, we got the bag of parts that are in the box. We got again, the rubber grommet, second rubber grommet. Then we should have two metal pieces. There's a trunk hunking and the bolt. So to do this, I'm just gonna push down on it. Let it come off. Get that, that. And then this is gonna go inside the Jeep. Get it in there and push down and let it come up. There we go. Let's get the second rubber grommet and it should go uh, like this. There we go. And let's get that new bolt we got, our nut. We'll get that on there. Let's put some diamond lube on there. So can you see that? Yeah. So we're just gonna put some on the threads to make sure when we want to make sure when we want to take it off next time it'll come off easy. That should be good like that. Here we go. 14. And that's the way we want to go. Put that on there. And that's working pretty good so far. I want to help it, you know, hold the ratcheting part a little bit until it gets tight enough where it can ratchet on its own. There we go. All right, so that's good now. We'll tighten that down a little more, but let's get those other bolts in the bottom, which I did on the other side. So I'm not going to show on this one because it's a pain to get. All right, we got the bolts on there now. Good thing, you know, I got the right tools this time. Or should I say new tools? I was basically using the old fashioned way, you know, without ratchets and all that good stuff. All right, guys, it's been a few weeks actually since uh, the last clip in this video. I'm gonna start on the back ones now. It's actually pretty warm out today. It's been uh, rainy and 50 degrees out lately. So today it's like 65 or so. Uh, so I'm gonna get this back one off with this 15 millimeter. And I also have this 15 millimeter ratcheting wrench. So gonna get this off. Can't really do it with two hands with the camera, so I'm gonna have to put the camera down. And we're gonna move it out of the way, make it easier. So with the wheel off, it's easier to get in here. So I got this wrench propped up against that. This one like that. And it holds the bolt in place. And it will eventually come off it seems. Sometimes, like I was saying before, I believe um, when they get really rusted, they basically weld together from the rust and you sometimes have to cut them off. I don't know how the other side is, but so far this side is moving free, so that's good. And then just so you can see up here, uh, 
Not sure if you can see, I, I'm just eyeballing it with the GoPro here. But you go up in here, there's two bolts up there, just like on the other one on the front. But I did put some diamond lube in here first, let it soak in, did that on the other side too, to make sure it loosens everything up. It's basically like penetrating oil. All right, and here it is just up. There we go, it actually just came off. So that's pretty smooth. It came off really smooth actually. Since I got the back tires off, I decided I'm just gonna pull these off and lube them up with diamond lube. Just gotta keep a little pressure on it. Now I'm using a 13 millimeter. I'm honestly not 100% sure if this is the correct one because I thought it was a 15 and that kept slipping off. So this one, every few turns it seems to slip off. It's almost off, so it seems like it's a 13 millimeter. All right guys, I finally got the two bolts off. Again, they're 13 millimeter. Uh, it is really dark, so it's hard to tell, but they're out, so now this thing can come out. Here's the two bolts. Now with this, just gonna want up. Do that and slide right out. A little rusty, not too bad though. Um, let's see, these seem a lot uh, better than the front ones. So these seem like they're a lot newer than the front. Could just be the front's a lot heavier too, so they wear out quicker. So to start, I'm just gonna put this bolt in first just to hold it in place. Not gonna tighten it down yet, so we can swivel a little bit, make it easier to go in. That looks pretty good. You can actually see the light coming through there. So we're just gonna put the bolts back in. So here's the bolts. Again, it's a little hard to see because it's up close. Just gonna run some diamond lube on here. All right, so yeah, when I was putting it in, I dropped the bolt. It went into the skid plate for the fuel tank and it kind of rolled under. So I got new bolts. So if you need new ones, which a lot of you might because of rust, uh, this is the size. So here's the new ones with some washers I got right there as well. Uh, I put a little diamond lube on here just to make sure it runs in there. You can see the oil on my finger there. It'll make it go in smoother. So let's hopefully not drop it again. Got the new bolts in. Now I actually got some more paint. I'm gonna be spraying this down because before when I painted it, I didn't have the tire off. So now I can actually get in here. And I noticed I got a little frame rot there. It's not horrible, but may need to be looked at. But there's a little rust there. But as you can see, got the new bolts in there. 